And here is the uh, completed housing. It's a solid PLA. Um, <laughs> that took, uh, I think, was it 60, about 60 hours to print. Solid PLA. It's actually heavier than I thought it would be. Um, and I've got some finishing up to do in terms of uh, removing the support material and actually drilling out some of these holes um, just to make sure that they're nice and flush. Um, but I deliberately made it 100% infill because this is going to be my protection, this housing is going to be my protection um, from flying magnets. I'm not sure how much of a protection but it's going to be better than nothing. Um, and also I want to make sure that any bolt holes in here are going to be very solid to hold the weight of the entire um, generator when it's mounted on the plate, so put on top of that. Um, that's important. With infill, you're always going to have a weaker area inside, um, and I wanted to reduce that. Here is the uh, finished end end cap, um, with the bearing just uh, pressed into the center. Um, I also added some cooling cooling vents if you like um, and what I should have done but I uh, didn't put it into the design is to countersink these holes um, because the idea is oh sorry countersink half of them because the idea is half of these holes are for attaching the um, end cap to the housing and the other half are for attaching the entire housing to um, some sort of mount. Um, so that's there and I can show the um, end cap, for example of the end cap, which I have here, which will go on top of that. It's a nice tight fit. Um, so I'm just showing here um, an example of actually how I'm securing the bolts these brass bolts. Um, as you can see around um, there's a nut inserted into the uh, spacing hole there and that's how I'm going to uh, make sure that these bolts don't come out. So I'm just showing people here um, how I actually secure the magnets into the rotor um, or the rotor core and I've just got these uh, clamps um, and a block of MDF on one side to um, uh, you know, provide more surface area and I'm essentially clamping the magnets down, slowly tightening them until the glue oozes out the ends there, cleaning off the glue and making sure it's nice and flush, as flush as it can be. Um, so that the idea being that we want these magnets in as precise as possible to minimise um, imbalance um, which of course we will still have to balance this uh, after all the magnets are in. And what I'll be doing is um, drilling holes in various parts where I need to um, provide more uh, more weight to balance it, and then probably screwing in a bolt or um, you know some some hard heavy heavy metal that I can then secure in those holes and to get the perfect balance. So these here are the um, spacing rings um, that are on the shaft and the idea is that these won't rotate, they're tight on the shaft however they're a small enough di diameter so that they butt up against the rotating part of the bearing, the inner part that I'm moving there and therefore we don't get any friction but we still have um, spacing for the rotor assembly. So I've just inserted the uh, shaft in. You can see there's the bottom. Um, slid it in there. Because what I'm going to do is make sure that um, this actually, the rotor actually rotates freely inside of the ring. So in, in, inside of the um, coil housing when we put the end cap on.
from there. So as you can see, here is the uh, cause of the catastrophic failure. Um, either the plastic has failed, the um, ABS plastic has failed, or the glue has failed. I actually suspect it's probably the glue that failed and then collided with the wall. Or it's, yeah, collided with them. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, to be honest, it's hard to tell. Um, I would say it was the glue that failed um, colliding. Uh, and this piece of plastic came off and collided with, with the wall there. So unfortunately, my coil housing is at least a write-off. The rotor is a write-off. Um, maybe I can get this wire. I don't know if I can um, use, still use the wire. Um, but in a way, this is probably my fault because I originally designed the rotor to actually, so about, that I would wind um, nylon tires around it to kind of prevent this kind of catastrophe from happening. But I stopped doing that because I wanted the problem with using the nylon tires or, or, or even a metal band or something is that you get further away, your magnets get further away from the coils. That was the problem with it. Um, so in a way it's my own fault. Um, so I have to go back to the drawing board.